Hello everyone, so good to have you back at House of Refuge Church, Pastor James Jeffries, and we're continuing on on the armor of God. This is part four. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, because it's by your Holy Spirit that you lead us into all truth. Lord, guide us into truth today that we may, we may understand how the armor of God works and what we must do to put on the armor of God. We just ask for your wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The armor of God is his precepts, his laws, his attributes, his truth. Jesus is his truth to which we are told to put on Christ. Galatians 3.27 says, For all of you who are baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union with Christ, the anointed, have clothed yourselves with Christ. That is, you have taken on his characteristics and values. It's on the Amplified Bible telling us that when we put on Christ, it means we put on his characteristics and we put on his values. We begin to act like him. We begin to talk like him. We look at what he looks at and, and so forth. Here in Ephesians 6, it tells us, In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him, and be empowered through your union with him. And in the power of his boundless might, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a, of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and strategies and the deceits of the devil. So, you know, we, I know Christians today, they don't tend to understand these truths too much, eh? because they're always getting overwhelmed by the enemy. The enemy's always trying to lead us off and to, and to go straight. And I just see it happening all around me, you know, myself included. But I made up my mind that I'm going to put on the armor of God through worship and praise and adoration and studying and reading. I've decided that I want my mind to be filled with his word so that I don't have time to think about things I shouldn't be thinking about. You know, we have to make up our mind that we want to do this. Some Christians might say, oh, that's just a lot of trouble, you know, we're at liberty. Well, you know, liberty can get you into trouble. And <laughs> we are already busy doing so many things that we basically shouldn't be doing because of our sinful flesh. But let's look on how to put on this particular piece of armor. And, it, and we continue on here in 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger, and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. You know, the scriptures, the scriptures want us to be victorious. God wants us to be overcomers. And he wants us to use our faith and to, and to rise up and become a mighty army for God. And the enemy just keeps like, every time we catch on fire in the Lord, we get this fire burning. He comes with a hose, so to speak, to try to put that fire out. He tries to show us thing that, uh, that, uh, things that our flesh likes to look at and think about. And he reminds us of those things and we, we find ourselves thinking on these things. But we need to think on the things of God, the scripture says. So let's go on. In part one, we looked at the armor of light. In part two, we looked at the armor of faithfulness. In part three, we looked at the armor of love. And in part four, we'll be looking at the belt of truth. Girding our loins with truth. Ephesians 6, 14 through 17 tells us, so stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace and preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and, a ready, and, and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith 
with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. So when we're reading on the first couple of, um, of pieces of armor we read it out of Thessalonians and we saw one of them was the helmet of salvation which we're going to do as we get down to that part. But today we're looking at that wide band, that belt that's around our waist and, and what does this mean to us spiritually? So let's take a look. What is the belt of truth? The Apostle Paul uses the analogy of a warrior wearing a belt to hold his weapons on. He is making his weapons easy to get to in the midst of battle. When a Christian puts on the belt of truth, he has made himself ready for battle by knowing and memorizing truth. He can speak forth the correct truth when it is needed, just like the warrior spoken of. Uh, the warrior spoken about by the Apostle Paul. Now, we don't want to get confused. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and then we have this truth that's on this belt. So we're talking mostly about the belt, how it's holding the truth. Well, the sword of the Spirit is, is hanging on that belt, and we have maybe a dagger on that belt. We might have um, different types of weapons that could hang on that belt. And, uh, you know, you might come up with something new that I haven't even thought about. But that can hang on that belt. So it's used to hold these weapons in place so that when we go to battle. So I'm going to show you some scriptures in, in a second pertaining to using the truth, and which would be the Word of God, the sword, the Spirit. But I want you to understand about the truth and how this belt holds it and, and how it represents knowing the truth and so forth. So... We want to look at it, and at times I, it's going to, I'm going to be saying things pertain to the sword of the Spirit. But that's okay, because it, it, it all goes together. The whole armor system is all together, tying together the word of truth, the, uh, the armor of God, His light, and so forth. They're all one big piece of armor to protect us. So let's not get too confused or upset over it. Matthew 4. Verses 1 through 11 says, And Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. After he had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights, he became hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus replied, It is written, and forever remains written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So he defended off what the devil was telling him, which was the truth. You know, Jesus is the Son of God. But the devil was challenging that. And in his challenge, Jesus quoted the scripture right back, right back at him. You know, like right here on his belt, he had truth. He had the correct truth for the moment. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So he resisted that. It came to him challenging the truth of who he is. And he came back with the correct word, which was right here hanging on his belt that was holding the truth, spiritually speaking. He didn't really have a belt on, but he did have one on him of all the truth of the word that he is and was and will forever will be. So here was one instant right here. Then the devil, then the devil took him into the holy city, Jerusalem, and placed him on the pinnacle, highest point of the temple. And he said mockingly to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to serve, care for, protect, watch over you, and they will lift you up on their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, On the other hand, it is written, and forever remains written, You shall not test the Lord your God. So the previous truth was kind of like put back into its place, and the correct truth came up off that belt as he addressed the lie that was coming at him. He addressed it with the correct truth. And this is the truth. You see, this is the point of me bringing forth these three things. And again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, splendor, magnificence, and excellence of them. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, 
For it is written, and forever remains written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and ministered to him, bringing him food and, ser and serving him. Having the correct truth. In all three cases, the Lord responded back with the correct truth. He used the correct weapon to do the job that was needed to be done. But all those weapons, you see, was on that belt. It's called the belt of truth. And uh, you know, you, it might be other names maybe, but in some scriptures it's called, it, it's a belt. It's what we put around our waist to hold, to hold our weapons. And so in order to get the spiritual truth about this, this belt and, and the truth that is hanging on it, we're going to need to know truth. That's, that's just the bottom line of the whole thing. The Bible teaches us that knowing the truth will set us free. The word knowing means to understand, to abide in, or to live in. And in this case, this, this knowing means the belt of truth, to be ready. You see, are you ready for the battle? The Bible tells us that we should be ready at all times. You know, I mean, if we lay our armor down, which is spiritually speaking, we should never do that. It should be constantly, you should be thinking about it. You should be praying without ceasing. You should be in, in, a, in a frame of mind that, that keeps you focused continuously. Peter said that your adversary, the devil, is seeking about looking for someone to devour. And we are to resist him steadfast in the faith, the scripture says. You know, we need to resist him, but if you don't have anything to resist him with, yelling at him doesn't work. People, people think that by rebuking him and screaming it. I rebuke you and screaming it out loud that the devil gets all nervous and leaves. Let me tell you something. The devil just laughs in our face. You know, especially when we think that the way in which we say something will cause him to flee. What makes the devil flee is when a word is spoken by faith. And that's the only thing that's going to make that devil flee. You know, even Jesus... Re Giving him the correct response three times, the devil was still there. He didn't go anywhere. And, um, and in the end, the devil left on his own only to come back later to try to tempt him to do other things that was against the word of God. But, you know, knowing is the word that means, you know, to understand is knowing. I mean, if you're looking at a foreign language that you don't know, then you don't understand what you're reading. You can't even pronounce the words correctly. So knowing means to understand and to abide in it. You see, I speak English. I don't speak it very well most of the time, but I do speak English and I live in English. That's what, my, that's what I speak. And, uh, you know, and living here in southeast Louisiana, my English doesn't sound like some other people's English up north. They can't even understand because they don't speak it the way we speak it here and Cajuns and, and French dialect and all the other dialects that are speaking English are pronouncing words a little different than one another, but it's still a language that they live in. Do you understand that? The way in which you pronounce the English language is what you live in. And so the way in which we understand and speak the Word of God is our knowledge and how we live in the Word of God. We have understanding of it. And when we speak, it doesn't matter how we say it to the devil. When we speak it by faith, he will go. You know, you draw an eye to God and you worship the Lord, and then you rebuke the devil and he will flee. That's what it says in the book of James. In John 8, it says, So Jesus was saying to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them, then... You are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth regarding salvation, and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin. So the truth we need to know is that it will set us free in regarding our salvation. I mean, many people have, you know, given their hearts to the Lord and have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ. But then that's about as far as they go. And so they still, they still wind up not knowing how to defend themselves. And the devil can come in and begin to trick them up and so forth. And after a while, you don't even see them in church anymore. You don't even see them, you know, doing anything for God. 
they're all backslidden and turned away. And you know, it's because they haven't they haven't learned how to to understand truth and how to study it and so forth. But Jesus is telling them to, to here to continue to abide in that truth, live in the truth of God. Let's look at some more stuff. The belt of truth also keeps us from stumbling, holding, holding <laughs> by holding up our pants. Imagine going into battle needing to hold up your pants. The enemy will have an easy time tripping us up. You know, you don't have your belt on, one hand's holding your, your pants up, the other hand is trying to fight the enemy, so you can't have a shield and, and a sword at the same time, and the enemy will just stand there and laugh in your face because of it. You know, you don't, you don't have, I remember one time I, was, I saw this, this uh, criminal, he's being chased by police, not going to go into details, and he didn't have a belt on, and his pants began to fall down, and he tripped and he just and the police were almost they were almost in hysterics because all they had to do was just walk behind this guy and catch him you know and, and I think about that and I thought about it when I put together this message that without having that belt forget it you're not gonna you're not even gonna be able to flee the enemy is gonna easily overcome you and take you captive or kill you one of the two and uh, so you know we need to know that this belt is not only holding our weapons but it's also holding up our pants so that we can use both hands to fight the fight. Now in James uh, 3, 2 it says, For we all stumble and sin in many ways. I mean, since I've been a Christian, I've still sinned. I've still stumbled and fell. But I don't practice sin, but I still stumble. If anyone does not stumble in what he says or the words he, he speaks, never say in the wrong thing, he is a perfect man, the scripture says, fully developed in character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and reign in his entire nature, taming his human faults and weaknesses. That's an interesting thing. James was talking about the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And nobody can tame the tongue, the scripture says in James 3. And, uh, you know, but the only way, if we're ever going to get a chance to, to, not, to control the tongue, we have to tame the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you get your heart right and get the truth down in your heart where you believe, your, your tongue will speak correctly. Your words will speak correctly. And it says that then you could become a perfect person. Now that doesn't mean that you won't stumble. It just means that you know you're speaking correctly. You're edifying and lifting up the brethren. You're not sitting around gossiping and backbiting and and complaining and talking about things you shouldn't be talking about. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your mouth's going to speak the things that's in your heart. And so, if you're able to say things that is racist and hateful and uh, and bitter and so forth, think about it. That's coming out of your heart. And, and that's probably why you're having problems. I read an article this morning when I was putting together the PowerPoint. I didn't read the whole thing, but I was reading that article that was talking about the tongue and talking about speaking and so forth. You know, and, and in that article, it was, it was making reference to a person walking and, and being prepared and being ready. And in so doing that, that person was actually, well the question came up like this in the article, why does it take so long to get an answer from God? And so I went into a lot of detail like I just finished saying, and in that basically it's not that God's taking too long, it's just that we're not speaking correctly, and we're not, we're not asking God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In many cases we're, we're begging for an answer, we're saying oh please God, and only faith is what pleases God. So in many cases, we're not even asking correctly. We're not fighting correctly. We're not using truth correctly. You know, we just, we just don't even know how to use it. So we're screaming out, we're yelling, we're crying. We want God to, to help us because we're, we're so emotionally involved in it. You know, and, and maybe God might be merciful enough to give us an answer even though we're asking wrong. But God wants us to understand truth and live correctly and speak correctly, you know, and, and, and learn how to, to use the Word of God. We need to have a heart that's filled with the Word of God, filled with love and compassion, 
And so that our tongue is speaking love and edifying words so that we'll begin to bless our own lives as well as bless the people around us. But the enemy is trying to get in his lies. He's trying to get that lie down in your heart, you know, to believe a lie. And we need to know what to do about that. The belt of truth reminds us to keep our weapons sharp. When our weapons are on our belt, they are accessible. We do not need to look for them. You know, you got your belt, you take it off at night and hang it, there's your weapons hanging on the belt. And then you look at your belt and you, and you think, man, I need, let, me, let me clean my weapons up. Let me make sure that they're nice and sharp. So they're there. But if your weapons are put away in some closet in a box, you're going to totally forget to sharpen that thing. You're going to forget that it's dirty and it needs to be oiled and cleaned and so forth. You know, so our weapons need to be accessible. Our weapons need to be in view. We need to always be remembering that our weapons is our lifeline. The weapons is what we fight with, and we sure don't want to be caught with our weapons in the closet. We say, hang on, devil, let me go get my weapon out. You know, it's just not going to happen. He was waiting on that opportunity to attack us. You know, in the Garden of Eden, the enemy got into that serpent and began to challenge God's word. And the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, that Eve was deceived. That meant that she did not know that truth like she should know that truth but Adam was not deceived he knew the truth and yet he still ate of that fruit you know where was his weapons where was his where was the armor of God you know where was it when the devil deceived him and he went and ate the fruit Jesus our second Adam the Bible says in Romans he was in that garden got tempted and he resisted the devil using the correct truth and he came out of the, the wilderness in the power of the spirit. I meant to say wilderness, not garden, but he was in the wilderness tempted by the devil. Bible says he was tested and tempted like unto all men and he sinned not. Well, I give God praise for that, that we have a high priest that was, that he knows exactly how to help me and to get me through my battles. He told the disciples, he said, when you go before the judges, don't worry about what you're going to say. You see, because they had already been walking with Jesus, hearing the truth. They had, that, they had their belt on with their weapons hanging on it. And the Holy Spirit would show him, you know, the truth that needed to be spoken at that time. Or in other words, the weapon that was needed at that time. When Jesus was in the garden, each time he used the correct weapon back at the devil. He didn't say the same thing over and over. He, he put the, that first weapon back, you know, that man shall not live by bread alone, and he took out the second weapon, and he used it. Then he put that one back, and then he took out the third. Anytime the enemy would attack, he had the right scripture to quote. And you say, well, I don't know the Bible that well. Well, the Holy Spirit knows the Bible very well. He's the spirit of truth. And if you spend time with him in worship and praise, and read your Bible, you know, as much as you can. He will bring back the truth that's needed at that moment. And you stand on that truth. You use it against the devil when it comes into your mind. Get yourself a good promise book that, that quotes, that has the scriptures in there for different topics of things that could happen in your life. You know, we need, we need to be ready. We need to be skillful in the Word of God. So the belt of truth reminds us to keep the weapons sharp. So let's look at something. 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. You know, we need to be in a place to teach our children, to teach our grandchildren, you know, do we know the word well enough? When they come to us and they ask us, how do you do this and that? And we say, I don't know. Call Pastor Jim, <laughs> you know. No, you need to be able to give them an answer. You need to be ready in season and out of season to tell them the hope that you have in you. That's what the scripture says. We need to be ready with the word of God, diligent to use that word, steadfast. And we need to, we need to be able to say the right one. We need to hear the voice of God. We need to know down inside 
and mix our faith with that word of God and say it with authority in Jesus name you know um, it says in the book of Jude that that when contending with the devil the uh, Michael the archangel was coming to get the body of Moses and he said he didn't even bring a railing accusation I mean he didn't just stand there and tell him off and stuff he just looked at the devil and said the Lord rebuke you and picked up the body of Moses and took off and uh, you know and we not, we need to know that don't spend your time talking this thing out with the devil you know we we don't think that we're doing that but we begin to talk the situation over take authority over that situation in the name of Jesus Christ bind up the devil Re get draw nigh to God and he and the devil will flee from you you know take authority over the situation know the scriptures and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as he tells you and brings a scripture to your mind to speak and to quote to skillfully handle the word of truth now to sum up part four truth does us no good unless we know it you know you could stand there with a Bible in your hand you know I, I'm reminded of a story in the book of Acts the seven sons of Sceva and <clears throat> They went to a man's house that they knew was demon possessed and they began to say in the name of Jesus in whom Paul serves and the devil spoke out of the man and said Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you and he and he beat him up and stripped them all naked and ran them off down the street they had no authority over that devil all they knew of was the name of Jesus they knew it in their head they knew of Paul they knew it in their head but they didn't understand the teachings. They didn't understand what they represented and who they were. So that when it came time and they were going to try to cast the devil out of the guy, he just beat him up, you know, and just ran him off. So the truth does us no good unless we know it. When a person puts on the belt the truth, he is understanding truth. You know, when you put on that belt, you start hanging scriptures on it by studying and meditating on them and, and understanding Jesus who is the truth. And we begin to know scriptures. Now let me tell you something. You don't have to know chapter and verse number. You can't, you know, and it says in 1 Timothy, you know, and, and 6 and 4, whatever book you're reading in. You don't have to know all of that. All you have to know is what the scripture says. You could just say, the Lord rebuke you. I, you might not remember. That was in Jude. You might not remember that, but you remember that it, it, the Bible says that. The devil, the devil isn't interested in the fact that you remember chapter and verse. He's interested that you know the scripture itself. And I, what I mean by interested is that's the only thing that's going to matter is the word of God. See, the Bible wasn't written, the scriptures wasn't written with, with chapters and verses. They wasn't even there. It was the Word of God. And so you don't have to know chapter and verse. If you do, that's, that's an added advantage that you will have. It makes you a little more skillful with that Word. But just know the Scripture. Keep reading your Bible. And the Holy Spirit will bring back that Scripture. So, to sum it up, truth does, not, does it's no good unless we know it. When a person puts on the belt the truth, he is understanding the truth that he's putting on that belt. Every, every truth that you understand goes on that belt. And it's there ready to be used in battle. Now one last thought. When a person understands that he should be ready and he doesn't do it, then that person will be defeated. I mean, don't you understand that we're in a war? Don't you understand that the devil doesn't sleep? We are protected by angels, thank you Jesus, that we have a cloud of angels that protect us and watch over us. But if we're just being lazy, and we're speaking words we shouldn't be speaking, and we, we're living in such a way that, like, you know, it's like going on vacation and leaving a big sign, doors and windows are unlocked. Any thief in the neighborhood have at it. You know, and, and we, we would never do such a thing, but if we're not diligent, we don't do everything that we can do to stand on that evil day the enemy will take advantage of it he sees everything he's watching he's got demons all over watching everybody looking for somebody to take down especially a minister 
especially somebody with a, with a big church. The more people that's listening to them, that's the ones that they want to take down. And they speak to them with lies. You know, back in that garden, I was making a comment a minute ago, the devil said, has God said? You know, they said that, yeah, we, shouldn't, we can't eat of this tree or we will die. Has God said? The devil said, I tell you what, you shall not die. He contradicted the word of God. Adam was not deceived and Eve wasn't. She went, oh. But Adam, he was not deceived. He knew the truth and he did not use it. The devil said, you shall be like God to know good and evil. So this one last thought. Probably all know these scriptures, but let's look at them anyway. Matthew 7. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man, a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell, and the floods and torrents came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had been founded on a rock. I can preach all day on that, but it's really simple. The wise man put down pilings and built on a rock and who knows what else he did to, sh to shim it up. And when the waves came, it was on a rock. The house was built out of that rock, nice and strong. You know, and Jesus said, everyone who hears these words, what he said? He said, those that do the will of my Father. That's what he said in this chapter. Go back and read it. Those are the only ones that it will do the will of the Father. In other words, know truth, live by that truth, stand on that truth. Have that truth ready. Meditating on it. Speaking it. Just get in the habit of just speaking it. Even if you're not in battle, speak it. That's like sharpening the sword. Then it says, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish, stupid man who built his house on the sand and the rain fell and the floods and torrents came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great and complete was its fall that's pretty obvious that the rock is Jesus we need to build on that rock the truth he is the truth the way the truth and the life this foolish man the amplified actually says a stupid person that's pretty strong foolish man built it on the sand. Man, I watched, and I've been, I was a kid building sand castles and the tide would start coming in at the beach and wash it away. I used to like that because it was fun watching it do that, but imagine your house being that way. Built on the sand. Built on something that your house, the weight of your house will sink into the sand and collapse. You know, that's not the Word of God. The Word of God is a rock solid. We need to be wise. We need to learn truth. We need to understand truth. We don't understand it. Man, you can go online and punch up, you know, that, that scripture and get all kind of people to comment on it. You've got commentaries you can have access to. You don't even have to buy all these commentaries. You can go online and have access to all the commentaries that's out there. You can call up someone that, that might know what that scripture means. But there's always more and more that it could mean. We need, to, we need to be faithful in studying, faithful in sharpening our, our weapons and keeping them clean and ready to be used. You know, we live in a wicked world, and if it's not someone trying to, to kill you or steal you, what you own, it could be a strong hurricane or a tornado or something, an earthquake that could come and cause your whole house to collapse. All these things. There are everything in this life is against us because there's a curse on this world. But we have been set free from the curse. God has an answer. Do you have that answer today? Do you have on the belt the truth? Do you have many different truths of the Word of God hanging on that belt, ready for battle? Are you just being lazy? Oh, I read my Bible once, you know, and you've been saved a long time. And Listen to me. You need to study. You need to read. This is not legalism that I'm preaching. This is just plain truth. You need to know. If you're in love with the Lord, then you should want to know Him, the truth. So let's pray right now. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the truth that You have set us free with, the truth, Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And we love Him so much, and we give Him all the praise. 
Thank you, Father, right now as we worship you in spirit and truth. Help us to put on that belt. Teach us what that truth means and how, what it stands for. And help us to put on the armor of God. In Jesus' name, amen.